A return to the Middle East now, and it's been reported overnight that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, I can't say his name, has ordered the IDF to compile a list of targets that would allow his country to retaliate against Iran in a way that would not alienate the United States of America. Well, joining us now is former UK ambassador to Iran, Sir Richard Dalton. Good morning, uh, Sir Richard. Netanyahu has gathered his war cabinet. Do you think we'll see him ignore advice and strike back at Iran? Yes. Uh, if you mean the advice that they should take the win of their successful defeat of Iran's attack on Saturday uh, and proceed to a major retaliation, then I think they are going to ignore that advice. Uh, <clears throat> I don't see myself how it's possible to attack Iran on its homeland without generating a massive Iranian response, which would endanger the whole region, the world economy, uh, certainly some Britons in the region and our forces, and certainly American targets. So the decision that the War Cabinet appears to have taken is an extremely dangerous one. We are where we are because of the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, followed by the highly aggressive response by Iran. And the very last thing we all need is an attempt to re-establish deterrence by Israel that would in turn provoke a regional war. Um, Sir Richard, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much indeed. I, I've been looking at this the last sort of two or three days and trying to talk about it from a, 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 a wider ranging view. And you can talk about tit for tat. I don't think, I mean, this latest thing started, of course, with that attack on the embassy in Damascus. But it's been going on a long time. What I think is quite interesting is a week ago, my friend, we were sat here on this show talking about whether the West, the United Kingdom, should be supporting Israel. Uh, there were questions about should we be, you know, selling arms to them? What happened over the weekend, I guess, has solidified Netanyahu's position at home. That would be the first thing I would say. I think it's patently obvious that the Arab world hasn't jumped to Iran's defence and helped them, which I think is also an interesting point. But, of course, from, from an Iranian point of view, they had to show Hamas and Hezbollah and, and the Houthis, all those dreadful terrorist cells that they were supporting. So it's almost like people make decisions in war, you'd know more than me, Tactically, yes, to look good domestically, and, and, and that's where we're at, and that's the danger, is it not? No, you're absolutely right. I wouldn't dissent with any of that analysis. Uh, I would want to explore ideas which emerged in Israel from senior commentators early on Sunday morning, uh, that now is the time for Israel to cut its losses in Gaza, to accept the... Hamas condition that there should be a cessation of hostilities in return for the return of the hostages. If they're still and alive. that would enable Israel to concentrate on building this emerging coalition against Iran, uh, which it has been boasting about, that would bring an end to the appalling suffering in Gaza. Hamas has been massively degraded. Uh, the Western allies of Israel are not going to forget their uh, appalled horror at what's been happening in Gaza just because there's another crisis on top of it. So that's something which I think the British government should be exploring as a permanent member of the UN Security Council. So, Richard, do you believe that Netanyahu wants an escalated war? I don't just mean a retaliation, but I mean something further than that. We, we know that Iran have said, that's it. You know, that's all we did at the weekend, all, you know, 300, over 300 uh, missiles fired at Israel. Of course, extremely terrifying for, for the Israelis. Do you believe Iran when they say that that's all they want to do for now? And do you believe Netanyahu um, is looking for something more than purely retaliation? I, I do believe Iran that, that they didn't want any more than that. They had to take action and it should be limited at that. Uh, I'm not sure about what Netanyahu intends. The background, of course, is on many previous occasions, uh, Israel has advocated total war against Iran. And I'm extremely worried that there's a misconception emerging that you can effectively deter Iran with limited action. I believe that the kind of deterrence that Israel 
uh, wishes can only be achieved by a total military defeat. But Sir of Richard, Iraq. Sir Richard, you just said. I mean, listen, everybody has opinions. That's the beauty of a show like this. I, I wouldn't trust a word that came out of Iranian mouths. You just said that you worry that Israel uh, is going to instigate an all-out war against Iran, and yet you just said you won't be able to deter them small scale. If Iran is backing Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis, and are a danger in that area then what option do you have? I'm not advocating, by the way, in any way a war. I think it's really interesting that the Arab countries, as I said already, have not sided with Iran. I, I, I have this argument every morning. People say, we must have a ceasefire. It's all well and good to jump up and down and say that. Hamas and Israel don't want a ceasefire. You say they get the hostages back. We heard over the weekend that many might, might be dead. What happens at that point, tragically? Does, do, do Israel say there's nothing left to fight for? Netanyahu says... He wants to eradicate Hamas. And who the hell can blame him from a Jewish point of view if you look at October the 7th? But then we look at the humanitarian nightmare that's unfolding and there can't be anybody in the world that doesn't look at that and go, oh, my God, this has got to stop. But the West pontificating about ceasefires, to me, doesn't get to the issue. It's not going to go away, is it? Well, the route that the Americans and its Western partners have sketched out, which is an irreversible commitment to a Palestinian state and a time-bound negotiation to achieve that, that is the way to go. If you simply throw your hands up in horror and say, this is a maelstrom and there's no way out of it, then you will get what none of us want, which is a regional war. Yeah. Uh, it is possible to solve problems. It is possible using political means to end wars. All wars end through political means. And the uh, issues are extremely difficult and extremely entangled, as you say. But the Iranians aren't going to take suicidal action on their part. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I believe that they can be stopped from supporting causes which we disapprove of, provided basic principles of justice and fairness are adopted primarily for the Palestinians, but also for recognizing that the fight against the Houthis has been lost. They control the majority of the population of that country. And in continuing to support the so-called internationally recognized government, uh, those countries who've intervened are simply perpetuating the appalling suffering there as well. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so uh, much. Sir Richard Dalton, former UK ambassador to Iran. Fascinating discussion.